Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Garage Time TV here. I am Marshall and we are finally getting back into our 1952 GMC pickup project. Now it's been about a month or longer since we've had a video. Lots of crazy stuff going on here. I got a new job and we're kind of having a baby. So that's kind of taking up some stuff too. So that's on the way for us. It's going to be a big game changer. Lots of other good stuff going on, but by the time this video comes out, we should be at the Vic Auto Sports Open House, which is the weekend of the 27th of April of 2024. So hopefully I'll be able to see you guys there. I'd love to see you there. If not, don't worry. There's plenty of other events that we could possibly see each other. So don't worry about that, but I hope to see you guys there. I will be having a separate video for that. So make sure you guys are subscribed and you hit the notification bell for when that video comes through. But we're continuing our metal work on our 52 GMC truck. So what I've already done this morning is this is our front part of our truck bed. The truck bed is completely disassembled. I actually had posted that on our social media. So if you're not following us on Facebook or Instagram, please make sure you do that. That way you guys can stay up to date with some of the uh, behind the scenes stuff. But our tailgate and our side beds and the front of our bed are all blown apart. The bed floor is all, well, on the ground over there in pieces. But this is the very front. This is what is all the way up against the cab. And I started to cut the metal out of this. I'm like, well, you guys probably want to see this. So I've already chopped out this front piece and you can see why this is coming out. But I wanted to cut this out first because of the thickness. This is a pretty thick piece. Now I'm no sheet metal person or sheet metal expert and I don't know what gauge this is. So if you have to know off the top of your head, you know, please tell me. But I'm gonna have to take the sample with me when I run to the metal supermarket. It's like our local metal supply place. Um, so we're gonna have to go pick up some more of this. So I'm just cutting this piece out as a sample. They've actually got like this big rack wall of metal scraps left over. You just buy it by the pound, it's significantly cheaper than going and buying like a full sheet of metal and all that stuff. So I like to go there. But what we're gonna be doing is a lot of metal work today. We're gonna be stripping all these down. We're gonna be replacing these panels um, with fresh metal. I wanna make sure I get the same thickness. That way we don't have thinner and thicker spots and have to fill it in and all that stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of cutting. A lot of grinding, a lot of stripping of metal, and a lot of welding. So this is going to be a lot of that today. Um, luckily, our two side rails that are still in the garage, there's a couple patches in those. They're just small square patches about this big. And then our tailgate needs some serious help, which is, I mean, no surprise. After 70 years, the thing's probably beat up. But the, the two sides that hold it on are flopping around, and they've got to be hammered back into shape. So lots of metal going on. So hopefully we'll be able to knock a lot of this out today. I'm actually have off today, so I'm able to get this thing going. So we're gonna start jumping on this and I think I'm going to look at the other ones. You know what, first things first, let's just go to the store. Let's go pick up a whole bunch of metal. I think it's gonna be the best thing to do is take this with us and use this as our gauge. You see what I did there? Gauge, metal, metal gauge, thickness, it's called gauge. Why, 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 why? Whatever. Anyway, so we're going to head to the store. We're going to pick up some more metal and then we're going to kind of roughly beat it into shape like this and then start welding it in. But I do want to strip it all down and prime it just like we did all of our other uh, panels. On our last video, what we did the hood, you know, we did all the body work on the hood. We're going to be doing that very similar on here. So I'll spare you on that. If you want to see that, just make sure you check out the last video. Um, and that way you can get a kind of picture of where we're going with body work and all that kind of stuff. So let's pack up. I think they just opened actually. So we're going to go be that person and be the first one to the store. So off to the store we go to pick up some supplies. One hour later. So we're back from our metal supply run. I ended up getting about three or four pieces that were like this. Um, they're not quite as thick as I would like, but they're pretty close. So we'll run with it. That's what she said. <laughs> Um, and then there's a couple other pieces of this and I got three pieces of angle iron all about four feet long um, For 30 bucks just because they're all drop cuts um, off of customer order So it's just kind of what's left over. So it's a good way to save some money So be on the lookout for places like that in your area um, It was really good value for me because if I wanted to go get just one piece of angle iron It's gonna be 30 bucks from the home home goods store. So um, It's a good good thing there. So anyway we uh, made another stop at the Harbor Freight and picked up some other stuff to help us make this project a little bit better. So we have gotten our first piece cut here to length and we're gonna need to start getting these bends in it. So what I wanna do is mark where our first bend will need to be. We'll bend it up and then we'll mark our second bend. So we're gonna use that there, this one here. 
and we'll grab our straight edge and connect the two dots. And then, I mean, I don't have a brake or anything like that. So we're just gonna use the magic of our workbench to bend it up, right? Bend it up, yes, bend it up towards us and make that happen. So let's draw our line with our obsessively long, absurdly long level here. This is just the exciting part of, you know, metal work is continually cutting and trimming and trying to make it fit. So what we're gonna need to do is flip this over and hammer down so that this will come up. Um, yeah, because otherwise we're gonna be doing it the wrong way. So um, I'm just gonna beat this into submission and I'll bring you back because I don't think you wanna see me just wail on a piece of metal forever. So we're gonna get that set up. A few moments later. All right. My arm's a little tired from swinging the hammer, but we got our piece made. It's not quite perfect on the end here. I think I cut a little crooked. But when we take our old piece, we overlap it. We are pretty close, considering we're working with a rusted old piece. But I think that's good enough. So what we're gonna do now is take this, and you know what? Before we do that. I should probably transpose the holes that are for, um, oh, what do you call it? They attach to the front bed rail. It's like a big C-channel piece. So we're just gonna kinda loosely mark that on the inside here. Just to have this reference of where they're really kinda supposed to go. I'm sure we can come up with that later, but what I wanna do now is actually take this out there and do a test fit. And if we're pretty good on our fitment, um, you know, we might have to do a little bit of trimming here and there, but fingers crossed we don't. But if that fits in pretty good, then we can strip the whole panel, at least around it, and get this welded in. Uh, that way we can get it all nice and blended in. So let's go see if it fits. Let's see how our old piece sits in here. Okay, pretty good. Just the width of our cutting blade. Gap around it. Let's see how we go here. Yeah, if you account for the width of a blade. This end down here is a perfect match. It's a little thick down here, so we'll have to take our flap disc and kind of straighten that out. But that is pretty close, and I call that a win. I don't think there's a whole lot more we need to do on that. The good thing is we've got some soft bends in here. That's how we got soft bends here. I did have to take my cutting disc and notch a little groove in there for it to start to bend, but nothing that will affect structure. This is just an end piece. So I'm pretty happy with that. Gaps are a little big, but I think what we'll do is we'll clean up around it, take it inside and then start buzzing this in. I'm pretty happy with that because this is way better than what was in there before. It's not perfect. I mean, the whole thing's not going to be perfect, but it's a lot better than a big gaping rust hole. So. We'll probably clean this up and get this all tacked in. Well, we've got our first round of tacks on there. A couple down here in the corners. You can see where it's still a little thin, so it kind of blew out. But we're able to get it pretty good, even gap. A little big here, we're just gonna have to bridge it. And then uh, do a little bit there, do a little bit of bending here. But overall, it's in there, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bounce it around tacking all over the place to keep it cool so it doesn't warp or tin can, or anything like that, so we keep it nice and solid. We're just gonna bounce it around. I also have the air compressor hooked up with some cool air so we can air quench it. Let's take some of that cool air. 
cool down the area and it helps kind of speed up that process a little bit. So have that handy. And we're just gonna repeat this process over and over and over again and get that nice and shaped in. And then we'll come back with our flap disc, get it nice and flat, kind of make these match up a little bit better. And then uh, I'm not gonna worry about the holes right now. These are obviously oblong as it is from the factory. So I'm not worried about that. These holes are like factory drain holes is what I'm assuming because they're pretty consistent. We also have some cracks here to weld up on the side there and there. So there's a lot of welding to do. We're just gonna keep repeating this process, tacking all around this thing until we get it fully sealed up and then we'll make it nice and smooth. Well, we've got it all cleaned up for the most part. A couple pinholes, exposed ourselves, and a couple other things here on the bottom. Is it perfect? No. Should we really just have to cut this whole bottom piece off and remade it? Probably. But the other thing that you may notice is that it's full of dents and dings, and it's like concave shaped. So it's got a big curve on the inside, which did not have originally. Well, that's just from throwing stuff in the bed of the truck, you know, wood or whatever you throw all the way to the front and it ends up denting it over time. So we're getting this kind of curve in it. So what I'm gonna try and do, and you may have seen it in the time lapse there, is I'm gonna take this middle and just kind of work it over the edge of the sawhorse and try and get that a little more straight. These little dents and dings, I'm not gonna worry about too much. I'm just gonna glaze over them with some filler. We do have some of the rust pitting holes here, so we're gonna have to do some body work there. That's the bad thing about the truck bed is both sides have to get done. So this side probably the least, just because it's gonna be up against the cab. So I'm not super worried about this side, but this side here, you know, we're definitely gonna have to make it look kind of nice. Cause when you walk up to the truck for the back side, first thing you'll see is the tailgate and then the front of this and then the cab. So we have to make sure this looks good. Get down in here. I have some, rust preventative spray, some rust stop kind of stuff. We'll make sure we spray it down in this long tube here. Make sure it gets in there. Spray it on here so it all just kind of neutralizes it, let it dry for a little bit. And then we'll come back over with body filler. I'm not gonna show all the body filler part and the sanding and stuff. That's from the last video where we did the hood. Very same principles, so I'm not gonna bore you with all that again. Again, I know this isn't super exciting, but unfortunately it's part of the process. So we're gonna work on getting some of this curve out and getting it more flat. That way it's a little bit better looking. Many hours later. All right, so we've done quite a bit. The other side is kind of done, I guess. This side I'm not gonna worry too much about. Um, all the little pinholes and things are filled. Um, I went to go prime it and I realized I don't have any primer left and it's five o'clock and I'm not gonna go out on these roads at five o'clock. So, that being said, I've got some self etching primer. So I think it'll be good to spread it on first and really let this stuff all set up. I've been hammering it out all afternoon. So we're gonna set that up, uh, get it sprayed on and uh, start filling in some of those really small stuff. And then we're just gonna get this thing primed. I can pick it up on the way home from work tomorrow and just primer it. But I think that's gonna be kind of the end of this episode. It's kind of like a progress update video I guess um, just see stuff is progressing you know new job baby on the way stuff like that um, a lot's changing around here so that's why there's been a big gap in the content so I apologize for that I just wanted to kind of get you guys something out there so you'd see the project is continuing and we're still getting stuff going out there 
and uh, out on the old YouTube. So make you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing really helps the channel. We are growing like crazy, and I cannot thank you enough. Make sure you guys hit that notification bell. That way you always know when new videos drop. Also make sure you check out our merchandise website. There's a link in the description, and at the end of the video, there's also a link to take you there for merchandise. We are looking to get a design for the truck, so be on the lookout for that as well. The truck will have its own shirt and stuff like that, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for us uh, for this time. Uh, again, the Vic Autos open house is this weekend, so by the time that you see this, that should be going on the same weekend. So I'm going to try and get this out for you guys. Anyway, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.